Good morning. Uh, welcome to NCM's Get Wise. Uh, today we're going to look at chapter 19 of the book of Proverbs. Um, I hope yesterday um, you had a fantastic time celebrating Easter. Um, um, it was really sad not getting to be with family and uh, friends like normal, um, but it, it was so sweet as we got to celebrate Jesus' um, death and then resurrection on Sunday. Um, and so um, I hope it's sweet for you too. Um, and I love to hear about what is your fun, uh, best Easter traditions. Um, go ahead and comment those below. Um, some of them my family always did. Uh, we we went to church like everybody else did, but we we would come home and we'd have Easter lunch together, and we'd invite anybody that could um, that didn't have a place to go. And so we'd eat like ham, and then we'd make homemade noodles that we kind of put in this um, sauce that we put on top, um, and it's really good. It's one of my favorite meals. Uh, but we did that every Easter. But our home was always a place for anybody um, that didn't have a place to go. Um, and so I really love getting to celebrate with different people um, throughout the time. Um, so whatever your favorite Easter memory is, um, post it below. Um, that way we can kind of see how other people celebrate Easter, um, the rising of Jesus. Um, so as we jump into today's uh, chapter, uh, we see that there's this king that is being talked about. Um, and... It's kind of there's three different verses that specifically hit on this king fi figure um, and some of his characteristics. Um, and so before we jump in, uh, I want you to go ahead and pause this video and I want you to start thinking about this question of how is the authority um, of a king different than the authority of a president? Or maybe not necessarily a president, but like another elected leader, like a mayor or a senator or something like that um, within our system, but uh, what is the difference in the authority of a king versus an elected um, president um, or authority? So go ahead and pause the video and think through that question. All right, so as you think through that, I think this is really important as we look at, man, what is the authority of a king? As we look at what it, does a wise king do? Um, so go ahead and now pause this video. I want you to read all of chapter 19 um, think, uh, sorry, wow, I've said 19 this whole time. I'm actually on chapter 20. Uh, so actually read through all of chapter 20, my bad. Uh, Mondays are, they're tough. Um, and think through, um, write down, underline just some of the verses that pop up to you, write down some questions you have, um, but just read all of chapter 20. All right, great. Um, as we jump into chapter 20, uh, I want you to think through what characteristics, how did this chapter characterize the king? Um, once again, we see this in kind of three different verses. We see in two, I'll read this one, and I'll have you guys find the other ones. Uh, but verse two, it says this, The terror of a king is like the growling of a lion. Whoever provokes him to anger forfeits his life. Um, it is an honor for a man to keep aloof from strife, but every fool will be quit quarreling. Um, so we see this, that, man, the king is like a lion, a roaring lion, and you don't want to provoke him to anger because you're going to lose your life. Um, and so that's kind of one characteristic. There is this um, fierceness about the king and the strength, the ability um, to take life. Um, so now I want you to go ahead and pause this video and look through what are those other characteristics of the king. All right, welcome back. Uh, so as you looked at what is characteristics of the king, I think a very important question for us to talk through is, is the king that is talked about in this passage God? Um, is he Jesus as we celebrated yesterday? Um, and to answer the question, um, we can, throughout the book of Proverbs, it talks about this king a couple times, um, specifically, specifically when we see um, it's saying wise king, a good king. It definitely is very clearly um, either a god or a godlike, um, a, a king that is after God's heart. Um, but we can also see um, in verse 8, it says a king who sits on the throne of judgment, windows all evil with his eyes. Um, and so this kind of would lead us to think that this king is probably more of God, but even the even earthly king um, has this throne is able to judge right or wrong any king. Um, and so, but as we look at any king compared to our, our, our heavenly king, that his God is perfect and 
um, he's powerful as we see in the first passage, but he's also uh, merciful. Um, and so if you look through this, um, you can kind of go both ways. And so I want to ask you the question. I want you to pause and think through. And is the king it's talking about in this passage God? Um, and why or why not? And so go ahead and just spend some time and think through that. Once again, look back over those characteristics. Are those characteristics, characteristics of God that we see in other passages um, and where else? So go ahead and pause this video and spend some time thinking about what is the character of God um, and does this king that talks about here, do these characteristics, do these match up? All right. Welcome back. Uh, I hope that wasn't. I hope that was fun. Uh, as you think through what what is a king, what are the characteristics of God, and how do those relate? Um, I think as we look through this, uh, one of my favorite verses that talks about it is actually in verse nine. Let me go ahead and read this to you. Um, it says, uh, and this actually we'll read the whole thing. This once again, this characteristic of a king. This is a king who sits on the throne of judgment. Winnows all evil with his eyes. Who can say, I have made my heart pure? I am clean from my sin. Um, I think this is a beautiful question of in who can say that my heart is pure and I'm clean from my sin? Um, how does this happen? Uh, what leads this? And and so uh, what I want you to pause this video and think through is, man, can you say that my heart is pure and I'm clean from my sin? Uh, because there's only one way that we can be clean from our sin, and that's through Jesus. Uh, which is amazing that we celebrated this yesterday, and we talked about this now today. Um, that by Jesus' death um, and then resurrection, that he died for our sins. He died the death that we deserved. Um, and then he rose again, conquering death, and then returning to his rightful place in God's right hand. Um, and so when we believe in him, and when we accept him, uh, and we live our life for him, um, and, and we... We see this in uh, in Romans. It talks about this a lot. Um, but when we when we turn to Him and we make Him Lord of our lives, then everything changes. And then our hearts are clean, are made pure, and we're we're broken free from the chains of our sin. Um, and so, my question I want to leave you guys with, and I have several, is one: Do you know the risen King? Do you know Jesus? Um, and so that's the first question. Do you celebrate his his rise? And secondly, uh, do you live your life like Jesus is king of your life? Um, because God isn't God and Jesus. Uh, they're not just the presence of our life or the centers of our life, the mayor of life, where we can we can obey or we can disobey, um, and, and there's some consequences. But are they really king? Are they in control of life or death? that we have to say yes at whatever you call us to? Do you live your life that way? Um, and then finally, I leave you with a challenge. Um, my challenge for you is to call somebody up near you. Um, if that's a family member, maybe that's a friend, call them and ask them this question of, and how do you view Jesus? Do you view, view him as king? Um, do you not? How does that affect your life? And share about how your views of Jesus um, impacts that. So once again, let me share those with you. The first one is, um, do you know the risen king? Do you know Jesus? Um, secondly, uh, do you live your life as if Jesus was the king of your life or as if he, he's the president of your life? And finally, the challenge is to go ask somebody, how do they live their life after Jesus? How do they view him? Um, and then share about your experience with Jesus. So once again, thank you for tuning in. Uh, to chapter 20 of uh, Proverbs. I hope this has been good, and I hope you're getting wiser as you're coming to know the Lord better. Um, thanks. Talk to you later. Bye.